Hello once again, Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage Mechanics. Today we're going to be helping Natey along with her tools and whatnot for her upcoming mechanic shop right here on our channel. So I've got a neat little item that I've been working on. This is something that I created when I was about 11 or 12 years old. And I've been looking at it over the years and I've found a bunch of problems with it and whatnot. And it's starting to fall apart anyway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this thing apart in this video and rebuild it the way it should have been built, you know, in order to function properly. So without further ado, let's go down to the bench and check out this old, old little display garage piece that I made a very long time ago. So a very long time ago when I was 11, so that's about 30 something plus years ago, I made this tire rack for, well, just for fun and to try to get rid of some of the spare tires I had from all these different kits. So I made this out of some kind of press board material, sort of like pegboard, but without the holes in it, as well as a popsicle stick, some wire, um, a bit of red tape or something like that. And I painted used tires, $35 each. And then I've got these two rods that go right through the center of the tires. These are made out of wooden dowels. And I drilled the holes through that pegboard and I capped them on the ends here with, I think, a popsicle stick or something like that. You can see the texture pattern here on the uh, waffle board or whatever you want to call this stuff. And again, I mean, it's not bad. I mean, I was about 11 at the time. I did get it all painted on the insides. But if Nady is going to use this as a tire rack, which I want to rebuild for her shop coming up, there's no way she can get these tires out of here. So let's bring over Nady for a minute. And there she is. So now you can get a bit of a sense of how big this tire rack is. And it's quite huge. The other thing I want to do, of course, is replace this sign because, well, my uh, lettering technique has improved since then. And I might want to actually try something different up top. But it is a pretty good attempt for doing something when you're 11 using your dad's power tools and all kinds of other things. So now let's see how we can reconstruct this and make it into a proper tire rack. So here is the tire rack. And uh, first off, the glue on this is dried out, so I can easily just take the top off this thing. And uh, then I can pull the ends off because the glue also dried up there. And we can slide all these Goodyear tires off and uh, just move them out of the way and then I'll bring this back. So here you can see those gigantic rods that go right through the center of the tire. And with a little bit of twisting, I can get these out. There we go. And so now I have the end caps. And the end caps are really what I want to keep in this project, although I am going to change a few things. So what I have here is a bag of these little wooden dowels. And unfortunately, I cut the top off, so I don't know what size these are. But you can pick these up in your regular dollar store or dollar villa or whatever it is. And uh, you can get these for about two bucks. So that's always good. Now I do have one here. This is something I was making for the scouts. So there's my knots there. That's lashings. But I don't need this thing anymore. So what I'm going to do is drill a couple of holes in the corners here and here and down here and then I will remake the rods here to the same length as the old ones so cutting them off or maybe I can even make this longer and just not cut them see if they uh, no they don't really match so I will cut them to this rod size and then drill them in and put them in so that now the tires will be sitting on the edge of the rod and an edge of another rod like that. And then that's the way they're supposed to fit in so that the tires sitting on the rods on the edges instead of through the center. The first thing I've got to do is find the size of the drill bit for the rod. And what I've determined is it comes out to be one eighth more or less. That gives us a nice tight fit in there. If I went 964s, it's a bit sloppy. Here, hang on. Let's get through the bottom hole. 
There. You can see it's sloppy. It'll move around all over the place. And 7 64ths, I can't even get it in the hole. So the 1 8 drill is the drill I need, which is right here. So then I can drill through that little board and slip the rod in. What I want to do before I begin altering the structure is to first measure it so I know how big the structure is. And if you want to build this at home, you'll also know so you can make your own. Now, I did use wood, but you could do this in plastic as well if you have the proper plastic rods and whatnot. So let's begin by measuring up one of the end caps. Everything here is going to be duplicated on the other side, so one is good enough. Now, I have my metric measure here but it also has 60 fourths of an inch. So to begin with, we have 3.6 centimeters on the base, and then going up from the bottom to the top is six centimeters. And uh, if you want to put this little cap in the middle, that one is about 5.2 centimeters by 1.2 centimeters. But you don't really need this cap. What I did is I just used it because when I drilled through, you could see the ends of the rod and there was nothing for it to really glue on. So now the actual tire dowel that went through the center, how long was that? Well, let's find out here. We have it appears to be 10 centimeters. So these rods were at 10 centimeters and so that means that when I go and cut the new little rods I'll also cut them at 10 centimeters long just so that this retains the same dimensions. So here I have my miter box and saw and unfortunately the handle broke so it got bent, so I can't put the plastic handle on there. And I have my rod now measured at 10 centimeters on that line. So I can put that in my miter box and then drop the saw on it and cut this off. But the only problem is I can't really cut it on this table because this is the backstop of the miter box. So the miter box is really supposed to be this way around at the edge of a table. Then you can line this in drop your miter or your saw down through the cut in the miter box and then start cutting away. So now we have our four rods cut at 10 centimeters and as you can see they should be the same length as the original dowel which they are pretty close to being. As long as they're all the same length within themselves that's all that really matters. Now one of the things I want to do here is remove the old glue off of the tops and you know just clean these holes up a little bit so that the uh, surface is nice and flat and then I will add in or try to figure out where the centers of the new rod holes should be and basically nice part about that being the way I made it is that I can line up the center of the tire with the center of the hole and then try to figure out where these rods should go what their placement should be. But I figured, I just remembered what this board actually was. This is a black board that uh, my dad had and he decided to cut it up into small pieces for whatever reason. But this green on here is actually blackboard paint. And you can kind of see there's still chalk in there from when you wrote on the blackboard back when you were a kid. So this is the back of the chalkboard and that's that uh, weird pressed board material again with that waffle pattern on it. So what I'll do here on my pieces is just use my sanding block and just sand that glue off. And there with just a little effort it's already smoothing out and I can uh, either try to snap that off or use my sandpaper for the glue that spilled over on the top or even use my hobby knife and just break it off there. I think this worked all right. Yeah, I can feel it's better. And the other thing is just to go along the surface here, use a little bit of cross sanding. So I'm going this way, and then flip the block and go the opposite direction, just to get it all cross sanded, and go in these directions too. <laughs> 
north and south, east and west, 45 degree angles from each other. And now you get a smooth surface, and I'm starting to remove that chalkboard paint. Unfortunately, all on my hands and on my nice grey mat. So I was sanding down the end cap pieces, and I noticed that these rounded edges are not quite as round as you would think they would be. So what I do is just use my sandpaper block again, and go in and try to round the corners where they seem to be edged a little more, and then try to get this thing looking more round at the top. Next up is to try to figure out the location of the rods that are going to be coming in on this little tire rack. And what I have here is a hard plastic yellow tire. This is one of the old narrow Firestone type tires. And I do believe it came with the AMT, or sorry, the Lindbergh 1934 Ford pickup truck, because that one was also molded in yellow with a high gloss plastic. And what I'm going to do is measure the diameter of it with my little ruler here, or gauge, I think they called this thing. This is the gauge that I had when I was in total quality management as a job a long time ago. So I've got that there, and it looks like 2.8 2 centimeters. So that is the diameter. Now to find the radius, which is half of that, it would be about 1.4 centimeters. So what I have here are these little pins. This is actually a uh, type of compass. I think it's called pointers or something, points. So I'm going to take the points and just go in here and compress them up until we've got about 1.4. between there and the edge. So what I'll do is I'll put this as best I can into the center. This looks bigger than what it should be. Oh, I see. These holes are not centered. <laughs> well, that makes things a bit difficult, but at any rate, I can etch that circle in there, and that'll give me the location roughly of where the tire is going to be. So now you can see the circles etched into the paint using the points, and they do match up with the edge of that tire, so I got it pretty right. Now all I need to do is figure out where I want to drill the holes for the rods in order to hold these tires. And I can do that again by taking my points and maneuvering them into position so that they would come out just maybe here. I can just scrape downward and then go on this side and do the same. Hmm. Now because these holes are not center, I am getting a little bit out. So I think if I put the rods, you know, on this side over here, well, maybe they would still hit the tire. It all depends. But I can't really have them on that line because it would be off of the tire at that point. Or maybe it doesn't matter. I don't know. Because if it's off on this point, it'll move the and different, <laughs> different over here. The tire will move over this way toward the front, despite these holes being off-center. So all I need to do is just, well, keep that measurement there with the points, and then move it to my other one. I won't have to draw the, the circles, or etch the circles in with the tire. But there's my line down that way, and my line down this way. You know, these points are really good. You can also use them on car roofs to make convertibles. What you would do is follow the top of the windshield frame along like this, and let that bottom one carve into the roof. Of course, you're going to have to adjust these. But, you know, you go over there, and then you can cut that part out, and you've got the curve of the top of the window frame, just copied from the points from the front edge of the window frame. Anyway, getting back to this. So now I've got the lines going down, and all I would need to do now is measure up from the bottom, and remember I also want to get the center, or the upper tire. So measuring from the bottom, let's see, 
maybe three millimeters I guess Would that hold the tire in looks pretty low maybe 3.3 Let's try 3.3. So, actually, I could just measure up and uh, draw the cross line on there, and that'll give me the points for where I begin to drill. And then down below, I guess we could go maybe four millimeters down below from the bottom edge, and that would give us location for the rods on the bottom edge. So, I'll mark those out and then show you what it looks like. Here's the end piece of our tire rack with the targets drawn on in place. And instead of trying to get that big 1 8 drill right through these targets, I'm going to start off with a 1 16th drill, which is half the size, and just take this by hand so I can get it accurate into the centers of the crosses and drill that through first. Then I can widen up the hole with the 1 8 drill for our rod ends to fit in. Now this will give us the same height on the bottom as it is in the top portion because of the little uh, scribing points. And what I did here on the bottom, three millimeters was a little too close to the ground. So I lifted them up to six millimeters and doubled the height down there. So hopefully with our tire here, we're not going to end up having them really resting one on top of each other. Well, they kind of are, but maybe with the rod it will move it up just a little bit. So I'll drill those pilot holes and show you what it looks like. Now there is one thing I forgot to mention here, is you will need to prick a little hole in the center of each of these crosses so that when you use your drill bit, because the drill bit is sort of got a rounded tip on it, actually it's like 33 point whatever degrees on each side, but it will have a tendency to wobble off of there. So what you can do is take your pointers, open them up, and then go in the center and push down and wiggle this a little bit so you get a little pinprick hole in there. And that will act as a hole because your, your drill bit's like this on the edge. And that little point of the drill bit will now have a little teeny hole to go in to start it off so that you're not wandering the drill over and off of the crosses. So here we have the crosses with the little pinprick holes in there. And now I can take my drill and it'll follow that hole as a guide. And it will be easy now to get dead on the center of that cross. And just to test it, there it is. So here I've drilled my 1 16th holes through the inside part of the tire rack. And if you look on the back side, you can see we got a bit of drill punch out here, and that is like the fibers of the wood punching out that way. So in order to remove them, just take your number 16 hobby blade and go in and just cut them off like that. Try to keep it nice and use a tip and just round it a little bit in there to open that hole again. And what I would suggest is taking the 1 8 drill and then coming from the back end into the front. Now, it was easy to, for the smaller drill to drill this way down, but if you're going to drill the bigger drill, I would suggest putting this on a wooden block and then maybe clamping it in place, then drill from the top down, and then you'll go into the junk wooden block with the bigger drill. This way, you're going off and then down that little gap in here, and that would cause this to rock. So you don't want this to be rocking when you're drilling. So it's better to put it flat where it won't rock and then have that go into junk wood and not your nice little tablecloth here. Here we have the end caps of our tire rack with the 1 8 drill drilled through all four holes. And I had a little damage right here and that's because the drill punched out and expanded a bit at the end as it was going through and broke a bit of the paint off here and actually gouged it a little bit. And then after I did that, I remembered one trick my dad taught me, and that is to drill partially through the one hole, then turn the project over and drill on the other side through the hole. And then that way it reduces the damage or even doesn't give any damage at all, like I did on this other side here. But I don't think this bit of damage is gonna matter because this will all be repainted anyway. And once you get a tire up against it, 
and you know you're not really looking into the corners here and the rod is there and the whole thing uh, no one's going to notice that <laughs> so I'm not really too worried about it but if you wanted to perfect that out you could always just fill this with putty and sand it smooth and all that but I don't really have the time for it so now what I would do is install the rods and I'm going to try to push these through the holes and have them come up flat against the outside edge so they'll be in like that one thing I could do is dip them in a bit of crazy glue first and push them in so that they won't ever come out again or use wood glue or fish glue which I think this is what this is and again that type of glue you can find in the hardware store here's our tire rack after I pushed the rods into the new holes and applied a bit of crazy glue onto both the insides and the outsides just to lock it all into place. I had to maneuver this a little bit in order to get it to sit flat because it wanted to twist a little. Now, the uh, cool part is that I can get these tires in here and they now rest on the little pins, which is great. The top tire wants to fall over a little bit, but once you get more on there, it will work out. Now I also notice that these tires are really rough and I'm not sure I'm gonna fill these all with these tires. They're uh, Goodyear rally wheels or rally tires from very long time ago. Oops, there they go. <laughs> but the bottom one stayed in. One thing I accidentally made a mistake on is the bottom tires, you want the big tires on the bottom because of course they're heavier, but I didn't realized that these rod heights were actually a little bit wrong when I drilled them in. These should be up a bit more, maybe about there, where my pointer is. And that's because you can't actually roll the bottom tires out like you're supposed to. They're supposed to clear the bars. And here I've locked it in. But, I mean, that's okay because I really don't want these lower tires to be coming out. So one way I found to put them in is to lay them flat and then tilt them up. But I shouldn't be able to do that. It should just go straight in. Because if you got these mounted on rims, you don't want to be trying to lift a tire up inside a cage. But, you know, for this purpose, for trying to reconstitute an old thing and not realizing that my uh, holes were, the big large holes were not really lined up the way they should be for the rods, I think it's okay. I, I'm going to give it a pass. So even though I passed this thing, I'm giving myself like a C minus mark on the height there. I should have really checked it before I began, but you know, it's okay uh, since I'm the owner of this tire rack. Actually, I'm giving it to Nady, so she'll have to deal with that. So next up is using the use tires sign again. And obviously I'm not going to use the original. I might just keep this somewhere just as a memento though, because you know, back in the day I was being creative and I tried. It's not too bad, it's just some of the lettering is kind of ugh. <laughs> At any rate, what I'm going to do is I've got another popsicle stick here, a fresh one, a modern one. And I can use the points again to measure in a certain distance. And then using my 1 8 drill, I can drill a new hole there and there, dead center. And I can use some of these bits that came off the longer posts so they can be the new uprights for the sign. Maybe even cut them down a little bit. I'm not too sure. But uh, let's just move this down a little. So it'd be something like that. And then I know somewhere I've got a little bit of balsa wood and I can use the balsa wood to fill in between there and then make a new sign on the balsa wood. So here's a little bit of fun. I was opening up my newspaper and I found this. Canada's Garage, that of course is Canadian Tire, but they have this ad in a flyer and it says three week biggest tire sale of the year, week number two. Now check this out. Here's the little uh, popsicle stick. And as you can see, it just fits the edge of that tire sale uh, lettering. So what I can do is carefully cut out this gray rectangle probably right along to here, and then mount it on my piece of balsa wood that I've got, cut the balsa wood to size, and then put my posts in here, maybe back a bit, of course, 
but glue that sign to the posts. And there I've got the tire sale of the year, week two, which kind of goes along with the whole used tires idea I had before. And here's another cool little thing I discovered on the back, which unfortunately I'm going to cut out, so that's why I'm filming it here. But take a look at this tire rack. This is for four tires, and you could almost make this by just bending a paper clip the right way. But here you've got rods going up, and then it bends and curves, comes around this side, bends back down again, curves here and goes down. And then I think there's a loop frame underneath as well with a little uh, leg right there. And then here you've got your wheels going through a rod axle. So that would be something kind of cool for an 80 to have. Or maybe even just come up here and then... Actually, you'd have to come up a bit higher. But then bend these straight out this way and uh, have those as handles instead. And you could do that using your rods and tubes. Bend it around the bottom just so the tire doesn't go through. Or even make a loop or even a flat plate would go underneath there. And then you can make your own little movable tire rack. Oh, here's another concept here. Actually, this would be easier to make than that one. You got a T-bar here, wheels on the bottom, and then you actually use that square rod and uh, bend this up around here with a paper clip, just in that shape. And then up the center, you've got a pole and all the tires slip through the pole on the center cap. So here is the part of the flyer. I just cut it out roughly with the scissors because I think if I try to cut this with the X-Acto knife just with the thickness of this paper, unless I've got a really sharp blade, which I should always have anyway, I'm going to tear it. I know it. I feel it in my blood. So what I'm going to do is actually just glue this on using some wood glue very carefully and apply a little bit of pressure. Um, with a book or something like that. But what I will do is I will glue this onto the wood first. And then once all that's dry, then I can take my metal ruler, flip it upside down with my knife, cut through all of this, including the wood and the paper. And then I would cut this out to the actual size that I need out of the wood. And the wood backing will keep this all from tearing and everything else. Here we have the old sign compared with the new sign down below. And what I did for the new sign, just turning this over, is I drilled in three holes into the popsicle stick and I put our wooden little posts in the back and then glued it with the crazy glue. And you can see now that it is looking more like a real sign as opposed to the old sign, which was just some wire bent up through the paper clip, looped around so it would lock in place, and then a sticker kind of stuck on here and the hand painted lettering. One thing that does look better is, of course, the printed lettering down below for the three-week biggest tire sale of the year. So again, this will look good once we get it on the top of our tire rack. Here we have our tire rack all completed with the three-week biggest tire sale of the year sign for week number two. And I used that Skarsnick Green again from Games Workshop just to paint the end caps. And I was going to paint in here with the bars and all that, but then after painting it, it looked really good with the wood. I, I was born in the 70s, so I got a, a bit of a liking for all this wood paneling and wood grain and exposed wood. Plus my dad did woodworking as a bit of a hobby. So there it is from the front view. And now if we turn it over to the back, you can see those upright posts on there. And again, the wood grain looks quite nice. There is a little bit of marking where the crazy glue was, but... I don't know if that really makes a difference. Now, what I want to do is I want to get different tires for in the rack because these ones, like I did them when I was a kid, and they're really rough. You can see the spider webs inside here. And the other thing is I can only fit seven of the big tires on this rack, but I can fit eight of the narrower, smaller tires. And uh, I really want to try to get some kind of different tires on this rack. Maybe a set of four here and then a different set and a different set down below or something like that. So they're not all the same kind of tire. And the other thing is I've got to put these tires in my tire spinning tool because they have a seam line up the middle. 
Now I know when you buy new tires, the new tires actually do have a seam line and little bumps and pin things sticking out and all kinds of stuff that get worn off as they go down the road. But I think I want to try to wear that off before it goes on the road, <laughs> just because it looks nicer. And this flash, it's not in scale. It's like really sticking out there. But these tires too, they have the Ray's Goodyear and the Radial GT lettering. And I know the modern AMT tires, they kind of eliminate that. I guess nobody wants to pay the licensing fees anymore. So these tires are actually quite nice, and I might use them as replacements on some of the newer kits, maybe. I don't know, because the treads are so huge on these and out of scale. It's sort of one of those things you got to think about, right? But overall, I mean, these will look good once I get a whole set of them on that tire rack. Now, as far as tires go, I have quite a few that I've collected over the years. And even the High River Flood that happened, I've got all those tires, but they're all caked in mud. So these are my fresh, clean tires, and I have massive amounts. I've got these cool little off-road ones. I think these came from one of the MPC Pacer kits or something. And then I've got all the old Firestone tires from the uh, 30s. I've got Goodyear Polyglass GTs. Again, tons to choose from. Johan tires. Man, you name it. Even got these early uh, Firestone Supremes with the pinstriping on there. Yeah, drag slicks. That one's kind of chunky. These ones are cool. These are old Firestones with the pie plates. Uh, got these nondescript ones. I think these are from some toy or something. So, again, a lot of cool stuff. Oh, I should put these on the rack. These are actually Lee Valley rubber tires. They're meant for making your own wooden toys, but we can never find anything that fit in that hub. So they're kind of useless in a lot of ways. But for the tire rack, they may just be too tall. So, <laughs> again, oh man, those things are going to plague me forever. And then I've got these ones that are drag slicks. These are the old AMT ones, and they had a center hole issue. But I painted a big fat white wall on there with acrylic latex. So again, I could use any of these. Anything would look cool in this rack. Here we have the tire rack fully loaded, but the tires have not yet been spun. I just wanted to show you what I got in here. So these first four tires are the original Firestone tires that came in the 30s and 40s AMT model kits. These three plus this one for another set of four are Johan nondescript tires. Then over here I've got the Firestone Supremes with the white wall tires. You can't really see the white wall. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> but they're the narrow white wall tires anyway. Okay, and then down below I have these Rally Firestone tires. They're big and littles. Two big ones for the back, two little ones for the front. And then here I've got the AMT Firestone tires that came out in the 90s and were in the uh, Ford Falcon kit. Or not the Ford Falcon. What's the little one? The 1966 one. They just brought out the uh, 428 version of that. The Fairlane. The Ford Fairlane. These first came in the Ford Fairlane and then they were used in other AMT kits. So... Basically, this is an entire rack of Firestone tires. There's no Goodyear's in there. But speaking of Goodyear's, when I was going through, I found this Goodyear tire in with the uh, white walls for the Firestone Supremes. And it's got Goodyear as a little writing and then all those little diamonds or whatever they are. And uh, more writing on this side and the pie crust edges. So this is quite an interesting little tire. I don't know what it's from. I do happen to have a set of four of them. I might uh, try to figure them out, work them out, and keep them for something different. And then, of course, I got those off-road tires, but they're good years. I do have a Johan tire that's a Firestone 500 on one side and a Goodyear something else on the other. And those came with the uh, drag cars like um, 1969 AMX. So now that I have 20 tires to fit in that rack, I'm going to spin them with my tire spinning tool in my drill press and hold them up against the sandpaper on the tread sides 
just to get all the treads all nice and smoothed out with no seam lines up the center. The other nice thing about these tires is they don't have any of those webbings in the center, so they are nice and clean as far as it goes. And here we have our brand new tire rack sporting a whole bunch of different tires, all Firestone. And here you can see it from the back with the wonderful sign with the three posts. And again, this was quite a joy to build and rebuild, actually. And it looks pretty good and should fit in perfectly with Nady. So here's Nady to check this out. And I think she is pretty happy with what we got here. Well, Nady, I wish you some really good luck in your new business with selling tires and welding, as well as using all those tools and the tool chests that I got you. Now we're gonna have to build Nady a tire machine as well as a balancer so she can mount these tires onto some rims. We'll also have to make a rack with rims on it so that she can sell those in her store. And of course, the other thing we need to do is get Nady a garage so that she'll have a nice place to work. Here is the tire rack with the oxyacetylene tank as well as the toolbox and of course Nady is in the shot as well. And now you can get a sense of some of the size and scale of all these different model bits. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video where I got to build Nady a brand new tire rack. And hopefully this time around she can get those tires off the rack instead of having the rod go right through the center of all of them, which would just be uh, really a hazard to try to get a tire out of there, especially if you wanted one in the middle or something like that. So now she's got the proper tire rack and she can begin servicing some of the cars that need new tires. So I hope you enjoyed this video and don't forget to subscribe so that you can follow along on this great adventure of Natey getting her own garage. So until next time, everybody, Happy model building, and we'll see you in the next video.